Hi guys, welcome to our first episode of Join the Table. Today we have here my good friends Terza and Naomi. <laughs> and today we are going to jump into some good food and good conversation. So let's get into it. So today we have Jollibee on the menu. First we have our um, Jollibee Chicken Joy Chicken and we have both the regular and the spicy um, to accompany it is some gravy and of course we have some other stuff here. Um, this is the spaghetti. This is the first time you guys have tried are yeah. You guys are trying Jollibee? Yep. Oh no, I've had Jollibee. Oh, Jollibee. <laughs> okay, I'm so a first timer and we got a better She's a regular. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into it. Let's get into the chicken. <laughs> so in the Philippines, obviously, this is being the first episode, I had to bring in the chicken joy and Filipino food. I know this is not traditional Filipino food, but <laughs> yeah. um, this is something that brings comfort to a lot of Filipinos. This is our fast food joint, so I hope you guys enjoy. Bon appetit. So we, well, Naomi and I have the spicy one, and we have this red flag over here. Why am I trying to formally eat fried chicken? <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Okay, okay Filipinos style. use spoons though, okay? So we're good. It doesn't oh, matter. Sorry, you can yeah, use I'm your gonna... hands. Uh-huh. So it's crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside. It's mm -hmm. well seasoned. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking about culture and our upbringing and how ha that has shaped our faith. Mm -hmm. um, I know each and every one of us has come from different backgrounds, different environments. Me, myself, I grew up Catholic. And I know you have grown up in Qatar with your mother and your parents having different um, religions. Mm -hmm. And you grew up here, right? Mm -hmm. And you grew up Catholic, Catholic Christian. Catholic home as well, yeah. Yes. So I want to know how that was like for you. Like, paint a picture for us how that was like growing up. I guess we'll go with <laughs> Naomi first. Yeah, so I was yeah born in like a Catholic um, home, but with like very devout parents. So they weren't just like the traditional ones who just go for Christmas and Easter. We'd go every single Sunday. And like growing up, prayer meetings were normal. We'd go to like charismatic conferences, like mm -hmm. even all the way in like Ohio and stuff like oh, that. Wow. Yeah. So, but obviously as a kid, like it was a part of it, but it was kind of like being dragged to it. Mm -hmm. I remember like my dad would play like worship music in the car and I'd be like so embarrassed when we have friends in the car. I'm like, dad, turn off your Jesus music. <laughs> um, because of that, I always believed in God and I always had faith, which mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for. Um, but in the beginning, obviously, it was just like a say your prayers in the morning and night. It wasn't really a strong relationship. Um, so it wasn't until I was about 23 where it started to become, where I started to like discover it for myself. Mm -hmm. And I never had any Christian or Catholic friends growing up, like people with faith. And um, that was something I always prayed for. But I expected them to come like knocking on my door and just yeah. like, hey, I'm hey, Christian, want to be friends? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was in 2016 where God kind of finally put the desire in my heart to like seek them out yourself. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to show up. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to find like a Catholic young adult ministry, but there wasn't anything in the area. And then I found something called The Hub at Church on the Queensway in Toronto. Mm -hmm. oh, and okay. their main um, description was like bringing together Christians from all around the GTA for fellowship and fun. I'm like, that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. And so that kind of introduced me to like the non-denominational Christian world. Mm -hmm. um, I was used to like praise and worship music. I was used to all of like that, but just meeting Christians my own age who were like normal, cool, dressed awesome, right. and like still had such a strong desire and love for the Lord, like blew me out of the water. And so that kind of just started my journey into like diving deeper in my relationship with God, awesome. discovering more of like who I am, more of who he is, right. my purpose, all of that. Um, yeah, and it's crazy, like the transformation of myself that I didn't even know was happening within those mm -hmm. past couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's been a crazy journey and yeah, so I grew up with like both my parents. They were they were around. Um, I didn't necessarily have a relationship with my dad, but I was super close to my mom. And my dad was Jehovah Witness, and um, my mom is a Christian, and so she raised me in kind of the house of the Lord, as as they say. Um, I think because my dad and I weren't close, like it wasn't like it wasn't um, like a huge barrier in that sense. Like there were times where he'd like try to get me to read like their their Bible. Their, it's like an illustrated Bible and stuff. And, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the disconnect and the dissonance between me and my, my dad was because I didn't want to be Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, my mom raised me a Christian, like, as soon as I, like, left 
the womb, I was, you know, like mm-hmm. praying and stuff. And so, um, yeah, like I, my mom would wake me up every morning religiously to read the Bible, to pray. Like we did devotions as like a mother daughter thing. Like it was a lot, right. honestly. I was super involved in church too, but I never, I think church was so much of a routine for me. And like mm. being a Christian was like a label. Like right. I didn't understand the complexity of it. I didn't understand that like it went deeper than just a label. It went deeper uh, than just being a Christian, right? Like it's a relationship, like mm-hmm. it's transformative, you know? Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize the true meaning of like Jesus dying on the cross for me. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's something that I knew. And like all of these Bible stories that I read when I was younger, I was like, cool, like Jesus fed like 5,000 people and like, you know, Noah and the Ark and like all of these different stories. Right. I'm like, okay, dope, like whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, they were just like kind of like parables to me. Like it was kind of like cool. There's a meaning behind this, and like, you know, God does cool big things. But I never had a relationship with Him. And I think, yeah, my mom is super religious, but it was more religion than it was relationship for a lot of the time. Mm. Like since then, like we've both kind of like moved um, in in like different paths in our like Christian journey. So good. But I think for me, the big switch was when I left home at 16, and um, that was when God became apparent to me. And I think. It was a really hard thing, like, having to leave home at, like, such a young age to pursue a degree and, like, to move countries. So a country mm-hmm. I'd never even stepped foot in. I think it was a huge thing, but I think it was so necessary because that was when God was like, this is how I'm going to show you, like, um, who I am, what I can do, and, like, take you on this journey so that you can learn for yourself, mm-hmm. you know. Because I think, especially when you're in a Christian household and stuff, like, you are under your parents' wing, so you're, like, under their religion, mm-hmm. under their kind of... Right. view of Christianity right. and so God was like you need to grow your own set of wings and you need to you know you need to travel like mm. you need to do this on your own the biggest thing I've learned is that we're continuously on this journey with God like it's a marathon like so there's no good. destination right? right like um like you said a journey yeah mm-hmm. you're gonna keep on going and learning more things and like you know every month I feel like I'm growing in my spiritual journey like you know like God reveals himself in different ways to me like at the beginning of my like journey with God and with my faith I thought that um, there was going to be like this groundbreaking moment where God is like, this is how I talk to you, this is how I speak mm. to you, and this is how I'll reveal uh-huh this to you. Aha moment. He comes out of yeah. the, he opens the, the like clouds. Like yeah. booming <laughs> And it's like, actually, no, like God has been teaching me that like, he'll also talk to you in different ways. It's, it's just been an interesting journey and um, I love it. Like I wouldn't trade it for the world, honestly. I think it's the most important journey and the most necessary work I've ever done is just to like grow in faith. with God Um, and I can't I know I'd be lying if I said that it hasn't dwindled and that I've questioned so much about my faith and so much of the Bible so much of scripture but Mm -hmm. I think you know I think in in the in the doubting is where God reveals himself so yeah Mm -hmm. that transitions us into the next question um but we're also going to get into the spaghetti so let's get into the spaghetti first so this is our Filipino spaghetti and the difference between regular spaghetti is that it is sweet and it has hot dog in it. So this should be interesting. So I'm going to let Naomi take the, you guys take the first ones, especially you, because this is <laughs> you first, your babe. first time. I just hope it doesn't get on at you. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready <laughs> to dig in. It's either you love it or you hate mm. it. <laughs> just I am on the lover side. Delicious. Yeah. Okay, I can officially take you to Philippines. <laughs> you are now welcome to the so motherland. <laughs> what was that defining moment for you when you decided I need to mature in my relationship when you made the decision to grow in your faith? It's crazy because like it just kind of naturally came into my life. Like so again, I told you my parents would always listen to worship music and be like, mm-hmm. Dad, turn off that Jesus music. But then there came a point in my life where I stumbled across I still remember, I stumbled across I Surrender by Hillsong on YouTube Mm -hmm. and just was like, hmm, maybe I'll listen to this. And so I watched a music video and then I was like, I was like digging it. And then Mm -hmm. I started listening to like watching more and more. And I remember Mm -hmm. like even being excited, like coming home after work, I'd go straight to my bedroom and like, like listen and watch a worship song. So Mm -hmm. God kind of put a desire through worship music first. That's where I first started to experience him Mm -hmm. on like another level from there like develop the desire to like seek out a Christian community and Christian friends and as I started to go like the desire just continued to get stronger and stronger and yeah and like I literally went all in um in 2016 nice started going to like any like church conference I could find I would go to like 
So I still continue to go to, like, I, and I still do continue to go to, like, Catholic Mass, but I would mm-hmm. do, like, church mm-hmm. sometimes, like, three times in one day. Like, I would do two Protestant <laughs> churches, then Mass. Triple dipping. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, <laughs> to begin with, um, in the beginning, I think, a part of me, it was to find, like, a cute Christian boy. <laughs> hey. Um, so that was a little bit of a motivation. Here, here. Just but, yeah. but, no, eventually, God was just like, uh, <laughs> seek me first. <laughs> and I was like, True. True. <laughs> she's like watching at Naomi. <laughs> Lena. No. She, uh, she's single. She's single. Ready to Christian mingle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to Christian mingle. I'm, I'm thriving right now. But hey, it's kind of crazy is. how God uses like our world, worldly, sure. worldly desires mm-hmm. and interests mm-hmm. to kind of bring us to him and, and show us that, no, I'm the answer. I'm the only yeah. one who will bring you peace. I love that. Because before I was kind of seeking it through a relationship with a guy mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it it kind of happened gradually, right. naturally, and through YouTube, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. He'll try, he'll come after you any way he can. Yeah, right? like, I don't even know Honestly. how that was recommended. I wasn't searching for it. Right. It just showed up, and I'm like, clicked it, and just something sparked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. YouTube just near. Was it YouTube? YouTube. Right? Yeah, it was on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube just near. Like, yeah. yeah. She needs to get saved. Or God just <laughs> algorithm. Yeah. God just used algorithm. Like. That's so the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having lived in Qatar for like 16 years and living next to my best friends, like we were neighbors, like I'd see them every day, all day. And so that was routine. That was what I knew, you mm-hmm. know, and like living with my mom and I never was out of my comfort zone. So mm-hmm. for God to be like, you're uprooting literally your entire life mm-hmm. and moving to a city by yourself. Like my mom didn't even come with me. Mm-hmm. She was literally like, I booked your flight. Like you're heading off. You're right. Because <laughs> she was just like, you just need to learn independence. Mm-hmm. And I think... The first three months of my life in Vancouver, I was extremely depressed. Not only because I moved in the winter, and you know how that is here in Canada. <laughs> um, I think it's just, yeah, like, being 16, trying to figure life out. Also, so young. Yeah, mm-hmm. being surrounded right? by people who were a lot older. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just a lot of different journeys that I had to go through. I had to go through a creative journey. I had to go through my education journey. I had to go through, like, being away from home and my mm-hmm. best friends and my house that I was in for 16 years. Like, all of these different things. And... I think it was a pivotal moment when I was like, actually, I cannot do this without God. Right. Because I was like, okay, I've had him in my life and he's made all these miracles happen. Because me moving to Vancouver was a miracle in itself. Like, Mm -hmm. I did not know what I was doing with my life. Um, And so I was like, okay, clearly he's evidently pulled through. Right. But I'm like, okay, God, like, I... I came to a point, like, I was at the end of my wits and I was like, no, I actually need God. Like, Mm. I need him. And I think that was it, just me on the floor, like, crying. like Desperate. Yeah, like, my yeah. face literally in my knees being like, I don't know what I'm doing here, and right. I don't know what your plan is, but I know that I need you, and, like, right. you're the only person that will see me through. And so I think that was the, like, ch- moment where it just changed for me, and I was mm-hmm. like, I need to find out what this, Christian- this Christianity thing is, mm-hmm. what this Jesus person is, like, who God is. Like, what is this right. beyond, like, you know... I don't know. I think a lot of religion for me growing up was so routine. Like, you know, church for me and God for me was just on a Sunday. Like, right. it didn't, I didn't need it in the week because I was like, oh, like, you know, I, 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 nothing was testing for me when I was growing up. I had a pretty decent life. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was just hanging out with my friends all the time and I had school. Like, there was nothing challenging for me in that sense, um, you know. And so this was the first time that I, my faith was being trialed. My faith was being mm. tested. Um mm. And so, yeah, I think it was just me realizing that actually I need God more than I thought. And that's when I just pursued my faith journey. That's so good. Yeah. That resonates with me so much. I think what's beautiful is that we all have Jesus and we know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so it makes the, the journey a lot more, I guess you could say, comforting. I wouldn't say easier, (laughs) just you're comforted by his spirit and his love Mm and, um, So that's awesome. You guys are able to, that you guys have him. And we have this community here Mm. where we can um, help each other out. Well, thank you guys for joining me, um, having good conversation and sharing your stories Mm -hmm. and having good food together. Um, We'll see you guys on the next one.